Good afternoon, everybody. The Irish Demon here, back with another video. Now, the trial of Daryl Brooks has been a worldwide, shall we say, circus. He's claimed that he's a sovereign citizen and that the rules don't apply to him, and he's done nothing but disrupt the world's most patient judge. Well, here's a few of the crazy moments that happened in that courtroom yesterday. Now, we start off with a young lady who's giving her evidence, and this guy decides that he's going to laugh at her. Before we get into this video, consider grabbing yourself some of this awesome Irish Demon merch in the merch store down below. I also to do custom versions, so if you would like anything custom written on your shirt, just drop me an email and I'll sort that out for you. Did Mr. Brooks say anything to you or Erica or Nick as he was leaving? He told Erica he was, oh. Um, the basis for your objection, you said objection, right? Is, is, is hearsay and irrelevant? <laughs> um, is it being offered for the truth of the matter, certain? Well, it's a statement by a party opponent, so it's not hearsay. Oh, it's his statement. Sorry, uh, Miss. I think I misheard what she said. All right. Um, the objection is overruled. Um, if it's, uh, she may testify as to words that you spoke on this occasion. Go ahead. He told Erica that he was going to find her and he was going to kill her. Can we pull up uh, Exhibit 5 for the witness? Now, the argumentation from Brooks has just been nonstop, really. At times, he actually appears to have a lot of knowledge, but he doesn't seem to have the skills to get those messages across, and he doesn't seem to understand court process at all. In fact, he doesn't really seem to understand the basic concept of just giving somebody else a turn to speak. So, of course, he continues to object and interrupt, and the judge had enough of it and decided to boot him out of the court. Um. I, I'm not allowed Sir, to keep. Her answer stands. There's no question to which to object. I, I object to that. There is. You can't testify at the moment. If you want to provide further information after she is done testifying, I will give you that opportunity. Will she, Your will objection she be able to, is overruled. Will she be able to stay right there so I can ask the question? Um, it's not your time yet. You have to wait. So <clears throat> this is the final warning. Okay, I've given you a lot of leeway today. You, you have not, Your Honor. You haven't. No. I am hasn't. turning to Attorney Opper. It is her opportunity, her turn, to ask this witness a question. And it is my right to be able to object just like she objected and, when I was asked right, questions. And when the court rules on an objection, usually the party who objects stays silent. Uh, I rule on the objection. The parties... Uh, don't debate the ruling it's noted for appeal and then, then we would, move on then i would like to put you on notice that i will be appealing that judicial decision that you are making next question attorney opera the judicial determination small and hop while on COVID protocol does mr brooks have access to the tablets in his jail cell yes ma'am and that tablet has legal materials available for him to access if he so chooses. Is that correct? Yes, ma'am. And while he is on COVID protocol, does he have access to the conference room, which also contains a computer with further legal materials? Yes, ma'am. And nothing about the protocol would restrict his access to any of those materials. Is that correct? Correct, ma'am. And you've I indicated pre- I object to that respectfully, Your Honor. So um, an objection goes to whether there's lots of rules of evidence yes, that apply. Yes. But if you're objecting to her answer, that's a different thing. You can I'm, argue I'm the meaning of that the language. Question, okay, the objection. The but then you have to say objection before she answers. You objected she after answer. she, she answered. Didn't answer the last question. The objection is noted. It's overruled. Her answer may stand. Next question. Ms. Wollenhop, you're aware that there has been digital discovery made available to Mr. Brooks for him to view in the Waukesha County Jail, correct? I respectfully object to that. Overruled, she may answer. Correct. He would view that digital discovery on the computer in the conference room in his pod, correct? I respectfully object to that. Overruled, you may answer. Correct, ma'am. And So you're going to overrule everything, Your Honor? All right, Mr. Brooks. You have got to stop. It's it's fine if you object. I will rule on it as I deem appropriate under the rules of evidence. 
which by the way, I provided a copy for you. See that big book over there? No, it see. has the criminal statutes. I don't see. It has the traffic code. It I has the rules see. of evidence. Well, it's on your table. It's okay. uh, behind the microphone and it's there. I've provided it to you as a courtesy so you that you provide. have that you, available you to you. provide anything to me. Something, right, I'm directing that, the bailiffs to remove them to the have, other courtroom. I've that, provided ample opportunity I've, I've never, for Mr. I've Brooks to abide anything, by the simple rules of decorum anything, and Your civility. Honor. Your Honor, I don't he consent is, or agree to what you are doing. Your lack of consent, consent is noted for the record. I don't give consent to an estoppel. I don't give I'll make consent. a more full record when we um, are open again to, to the public. Estoppel. I don't give consent to be removed uh, Adam reporter the record should reflect my uh, the court is stepping right. off the bench uh, you may step off I move I move for a motion to dismiss you still haven't even ruled on the claim there's no one that even has a claim against me here Now, as you'll see from the videos here, Mr. Brooks is wearing his prison orange jumpsuit. He was offered the opportunity to wear some suit or something nice in the court. And the reason behind that is so that you don't appear like a criminal in front of the jury, despite the overwhelming evidence. But he decided that he didn't want to wear a suit. And he claimed that he wasn't given the opportunity to, and this was shown to be absolute BS, shall we say. So he figured, well, I'll just wear nothing at all then, and decided to disrobe. All right, we are back on the record. Appearances are as they were before. I need to make a record that at 8.42 a.m., this court ordered Mr. Brooks be removed from the courtroom due to repeated uh, interruptions and disruption uh, with the court. Uh, this, of course, comes on the recent history with Mr. Brooks on every day that we have been in court since Monday um, he has shown a complete and utter disrespect for the simple rules of civility. Um, he has been removed from the courtroom multiple times. This morning alone, he started interrupting this court within a minute of the court calling the case. Um, I should also make a record at, at the moment he is muted uh, because of the way that he was removed from the courtroom and his conduct since. Um, I have been given just a bit of information about it. I will advise everyone that I have required that the Sheriff's Department uh, file a written report with the court uh, regarding Mr. Brooks's conduct. I'm told that um, he would not sit down while in this courtroom in order to have the shackles removed so that he could be taken to the other courtroom, that he was resisting. Um, that at one point he took off a shoe and it appeared uh, to the deputies that he was going to throw the shoe. Um, you can see that he is seated with his back uh, to the court or to the camera. He took his shirt off as well. I'm also told that he is threatening to throw and break items. I want to give him headphones since he has uh, claimed in the past to be hard of hearing in one ear, but given his statement that he would throw and break things um, unless he can pledge to this court uh, that he will not do that, um, I'm not going to provide that information. I will advise that the audio in that courtroom should be turned up accordingly so that uh, it is louder than it has been. I've also been advised that uh, the audio and visual equipment is working in that courtroom. The deputies that are in there can see and hear uh, the court through the polycom system. Uh, today is a little bit different in that there is no Zoom. And so, um, but this court with the uh, blessing of technology in this new building have the ability to call in one room system to the other. That is why we're able to see and when appropriately hear him when unmuted. And then there are the four camera angles that are presently from this courtroom. I have the camera in the other courtroom um, on a single camera since he's the only individual in there. Um, this court has in essence extended this courtroom to the neighboring courtroom while there is ample evidence in the record, not only through the proceedings up to this point, but this morning alone, uh, that through his conduct, he has forfeited his right to be present. I'd also make a finding 
that he uh, is appearing from that courtroom and that because of the audio and visual equipment and system that we have in place, that it is the functional equivalent of being present in this courtroom. Um, this court has relied repeatedly on Illinois versus Allen. I've read portions of that case into the record. I don't intend to go through that at length here today, other than to indicate that um, trial judges that are confronted with disruptive, contemptuous, stubbornly defiant defendants must be given sufficient discretion to meet the circumstances of each case. No one formula exists for maintaining the appropriate courtroom atmosphere will be best in all ones or in all situations. And in that case, um, there were at least three constitutionally permissible ways for a trial judge to handle uh, a stubbornly defiant defendant, which this court would find Mr. Brooks squarely has become and has demonstrated over the course of these last few days. Um, one option is to bind and gag him. I've already talked about at a previous hearing why I choose not to do that. Um, cite him for contempt. I choose not to do that either. The third is to take him out of the courtroom until he promises to conduct himself properly. Uh, Mr. Brooks today, of course, showed up in court from the jail in his jail attire. Um, he does that by his choice. Um, I gave him the opportunity to go back to the jail to put on his suit and tie or other street clothes. He refused to answer that question. Um, this court will continue with this trial as I have previously indicated. Um, there are many resources uh, that have been put into bringing this day to bear and um, it is important for all involved um, that this trial continue. Again, Mr. Brooks is given the opportunity to appear from that other courtroom. At this point, I'm still in the final housekeeping matters, and so he clearly has forfeited his right to be present for that. Um, I will advise Mr. Brooks, as I have advised him repeatedly, if at any point in time he wants to come back, and he is willing to promise that he will abide by uh, the rules of courtesy and decorum and be civil um, and show uh, respect for the court proceedings for all individuals in this courtroom, including Mr. Brooks himself, um, then he may come back in. Um, it's also my intention to give him that opportunity at each new stage. Um, but again, we are in the preliminary stage prior to the uh, jury being brought in. I would note it's um, a little after 9, 9.06 a.m. I'm sorry for having to put you through all that. Now, it's fair to say that this guy isn't very much liked at all. But in this case, he clears that a juror flipped him the bird. Let's see what he's got to say. Go ahead, sir. Um, I noticed that uh, one of the jurors, the lady in the black that's closest to the screen in that corner chair over there, I recognize her from um, my initial appearance. Um, she flipped me off coming in to my initial appearance and coming out. I know it's her for a fact. I seen her about like how I'm looking at you right now. So I know for a fact that's her. I don't want that to end up being an issue. Is this some type of way that could be addressed by your honor? Um, Mr. Brooks, you had an opportunity to exercise preemptory strikes and even to question uh, jurors about that. You chose not to. So at this point, any issue you have with that juror is waived. Okay, uh, you do remember that I was not present in the courtroom. I couldn't, I couldn't see, all I can see from that courtroom in there is just you, your honor, and the prosecution's table. I can't even see the bailiffs. So it was no way for me to even see who the jury was. Obviously, I wouldn't know them by name. If I would have been able to see the jurors, I would have immediately addressed that. Um, I will make this one indulgence. Um, I'll 
have the civilian bailiff ask that juror if she was in attendance at your initial appearance out of an abundance of caution. Um, these are jurors though who with the jury questionnaires were also asked what knowledge they had about proceedings they watched or even attended. Um, and no one to my knowledge has disclosed anything like that, but out of an abundance of caution, we will ask that juror uh, if she was in attendance at your initial appearance. So for now, that's how I'll address it. I'll advise you of what her answer is later. Do we know the number? Um, do you know the number of the juror, sir? They have I numbers. Just know, I just know that I couldn't see the. I can't see the number from here. I just know the chair she was sitting in. Which chair, sir? Top row or the bottom top row. or the bottom row? The bottom row. The the last black chair. Black so, shirt. She had the black they're shirt. All black chairs, sir. So the, the last chair black closest, chair, closest to the television. Thank you, sir. Because there are two sides, right? So it's the last chair on both sides. So I wanted to make clear. You're saying the chair closest to the television. Thank you. I said that at the beginning, Your Honor. Anyway, folks, that's all I've got for you today. I'm just about to start watching the live stream now again. Anything good that comes up, I'll be sure to let you know, and we'll catch you in the next one. Sancha.